This is unit number 5, Construction and Analysis of Profit and Loss Account. In the previous videos, we have already covered the links between Profit and Loss Account and Balance Sheet, how to measure income and how to prepare a Profit and Loss Account. In this video, we are going to see some indirect expenses. Let us jump to the topic. We are going to see bad debts and depreciation, the two important types of indirect expenses. First one, bad debt expense. It is a most common phenomena for businesses to conduct credit, credit transactions, sale on credit, which means businesses deliver goods and services and receive the money from the vendors or the receiver at a later point of time. These types of transactions are called credit transactions, credit sales. In the credit sales, the revenues are recognized immediately in the profit and loss account and the amount which is to be received also called as accounts receivable they are treated as assets in the balance sheet we'll take an example and we will see suppose a business makes four credit sales of 250 rupees each during a period cost of sales for the same being 500 rupees cost of sales means the value of the assets utilized for generating the revenues of 1000 rupees each sale of 250 rupees and four such sales are there therefore sales revenue is 1000 rupees and cost of the sales total cost incurred for generating these 1000 rupees is only 500 rupees therefore the profit is 500 rupees and the balance sheet is accounts receivable 1000 rupees which means cash is not yet paid by the receiver or the vendor and the retained earnings profits is 500 rupees now what if the receiver receiver of the goods do not pay the cash at the later point of time or in the subsequent accounting period there is all possibility that the person who received the goods will not pay the amount so if such a case happens then the profits of 500 rupees here and accounts receivable of 1000 rupees will be an overestimation okay therefore in order to remove in order to avoid such unfair representation of accounts we have to allow, we have to show estimated losses or probable losses in the present accounting period itself. How do we do that? That is the presentation of bad debts in the profit and loss account itself. So in the profit and loss account itself, we have to show bad debt expense as a loss. So in the present situation, if we assume that one such transaction of credit sale of 250 rupees is not going to come, if we assume that this is not going to come, then we have to show it as a loss in the profit and loss account. So there we are reducing the profit to 250 rupees only. Again, in the balance sheet also, we have to show it as an estimated collection loss from the assets. Therefore, the net assets or the realizable assets value will come down to 750 rupees. Usually, the possible collection losses are estimated and provided for by charging them as expenses of the period. Okay, these bad debts are estimated losses or expenses. Such estimate is reduced from the value of assets receivables, asset receivables to show them to show the realizable value of the asset. So, if we reduce the loss, we will get the net realizable value of the asset. Okay, so the next type of indirect expense is depreciation we all know that fixed assets have long life and they are utilized for generating revenues in the business the cost incurred on any asset with a fixed life will expire and this cost expired cost is to be shown as an expense all costs incurred on any asset with limited life expire during its lifetime and they have to be shown as an expense we'll take an example and see a machine is purchased for 5000 rupees having 5 years of life and no salvage value during the life of the asset it will be able to it will be able to earn a revenue of 10000 rupees so asset value is 5000 rupees life of asset is 5 years total revenue it will earn is 10000 rupees which means a 5000 rupees of profit is earned using this asset so what is this depreciation and when it arises? If we have to measure the profits annually, earlier we have seen, now we have seen that this asset has generated 5000 rupees of profit over a period of 5 years. Now if we have to report the accounts 
annually and we have to show the profits annually what should we do what should be the amount of profit to be recognized every year then we take that the revenue is earned we assume that the re revenue is earned in equal amounts like 1000 rupees uh, 10000 rupees means 2000 2000 2000 2000 and 2000 each year 2000 is earned during the five years of the life of the asset assuming no other costs and no salvage value or the final value the cost of the asset becomes expense over a five year period now the question is how should we apportion this cost over the life of the asset if we make the simple assumption that the cost expires in equal proportion just like the revenue is earned in equal amounts every year we have the simplest solution for apportioning the cost so 5000 rupees of cost is assumed to be expiring equally every year 1000 rupees first year 1000 rupees second year 1000 rupees third year fourth year and fifth year each so at the end of the fifth year the asset will be gone which is completely uh is it it becomes a trash that portion of the cost of the asset which is reckoned to expire during an accounting period is what is termed as depreciation expense it is this expense which is matched against the revenue revenues of a period for determining profits so the cost of the asset which is expired or utilized for generating revenues in that accounting period is called depreciation okay depreciation is the cost of a fixed asset written off or utilized for written off against the revenues of different periods during which the asset is used so these are the two types of indirect expenses bad debts and depreciation these two are expenses bad debt is a loss depreciation is an expense these are indirect expenses these are to be shown in the profit and loss account thanks for watching the video in the next video we are going to cover different methods of depreciation like straight line method of depre depreciation written down value useful life value useful life method and other types are there we will cover in the next video stay tuned and bye bye